Hi everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bead Boutique. So I'm having a few challenges these days and one of them is how busy I've become. So with only filming one day a week, you would think, well, that's not so hard to do, but I need to come up with a concept. I need to make, you know, three, four, 12, 25 different attempts at it to make sure that by the time I bring it to you, I've got all those kinks worked out. I need to figure out the cost of everything. I need to make sure I've got everything in stock or can I quickly get it back in stock? There's a ton of work and time that goes into that. Plus I have a very, very busy brick and mortar store and I have an extremely busy online store. And all that combined right now is making my head want to explode. I'm really struggling and I find myself going, I, I don't wanna film this week. And I don't wanna be like that because I have so many great ideas. I've got over, I think I've, this is my 122nd video, I believe, so I've got a lot of videos that I've put out, but sometimes it can get really challenging. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm learning a new editing program, which has been super challenging, but I'm trying to teach myself how to edit just a little bit different. So I'm doing a compilation video of uh, three of my all-time favorite bracelets and they're three beginner bracelets, which are absolutely perfect if you're a newbie. If you've already seen these, you may want to watch it again just to get a little bit of a refresher, but I hope you enjoy the uh, following videos. So if you wanna see what I'm making today, come and join me. So let's get started. So today I'm going to be using some of our new vegan suede cording. This one's about three millimeters wide. We have it in 14 different colors and I'm going to bring in some more because people are loving this. It's got a really nice texture to it and it's not stretchy but it's got a little bit of give so it's perfect for this kind of bracelet. I'm also going to use a little piece of chain for some safety chain on the back of it because we're going to be using a magnet today and I find that when you use magnets they often can get caught on things like metal doors and that sort of stuff. So I find if you have a little bit of chain it helps not to not lose your bracelet. We also have a couple little of these, um, they're just tiny little ribbon ends. I have a pretty little heart. This one's fun, it's got hearts inside the heart. You know, I love the heart thing. <laughs> and I have a little textured ring and some jump rings. And as far as tools, we're just gonna be using a pair of cutters, or I guess these are called scissors, right? <laughs> It's actually seven in the morning here. I'm barely awake, but I have six videos to do today. So this is the first. So let's wish me luck. We'll see how it goes. All right. So, and I also have a pair of chain nose pliers and a pair of bent chain nose pliers and a ruler. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut my vegan suede. So I'm gonna cut two pieces that are about eight inches long. I think when I do the kit up, I will give you guys maybe more like 10 inches so that if anybody has a little larger wrist, you'll have lots to play with. I always want to make sure that when I send my kits out that you have everything you need and that they're perfect for all different sizes. So I just need two pieces that are about eight inches long. So I'm going to take my vegan suede and I'm going to find the two ends, join those up together and make a little loop. And I'm going to take my ring and I'm going to go down through the ring and I'm going to make like a little loop there and pull the ends through and pull that tight. Now lots of times when I see uh, these bracelets being made, something you know where you're just doing a lark's head knot, it doesn't, um, it doesn't catch in here. And I've seen people make comments on videos and things like that, that this always comes apart. The nice thing about this new vegan uh, suede that we have is it has a little bit of grip to it. So that'll hold in there nicely, at least it seems to. So, all right, so I'm just gonna do that on the other side. So I just make a little loop. I go down through the ring and then I just take the ends and bring them through. Okay, so just pulling that nice and snug and there we go. So now I'm going to take one of the jump rings and I'm going to add my little heart charm on there. So to open a jump ring you always want to go on either side of your cut of your jump ring and I always like to use the heaviest, strongest and smallest ones that I can. So these are uh, 18 gauge and 4.5 4 millimeter uh, so they're nice and strong. So now I'm going to take a pair of bent chain nose pliers, go on the other side and do an opposite movement to open them up. I'm going to pop that through there and I'm going to come in just on the one side there and then just going to push this towards each other and I kind of, well that one's not going to jiggle, but usually I sort of jiggle and then it just kind of closes up. All right, so now we have our little bit of embellishment done. So now if you're going to um, size this bracelet, what you want to do is take it on uh, your ruler 
and kind of decide what size you need. Now I want about a seven inch bracelet. So I'm going to find the middle of that, which would be about three and a half. So I just placed the ring so that the uh, three and a half mark is in the middle. And then I know I have to trim. Now this is gonna add about an extra, it's about a, a half an inch or so that I've got on here of the one that I've made. So I wanna trim this to about, maybe about six and three quarters. So I'm gonna go to the six and three quarter mark right there. And I don't go crazy with my measuring. I just measure with my fingers. I'm kind of lazy like that. I don't strive for perfection because it'll make you nuts. All right, and then I'm gonna go back to that on the other side and go to the six and three quarter mark. And there we go, up to there. Now, of course, you can make this to any size that you want. All right, so now we have the correct length that we need. So now I'm gonna be using these little uh, ribbon ends. Now these ones don't quite cover the entire thing up, but I think it's perfectly fine. So what I do is I just place it on there with my fingers and I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna just kind of give it a start and push it down. And you can see it's just a little tiny bit that's hanging um, off the side there, but I think that's fine. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna give it a good squish. These have little teeth on the end and you want them to kind of grip in there, but I'm not squeezing so tight that it cuts through the uh, suede. And now I'm gonna repeat on the other end. So it's important that you have your ends nicely trimmed so that they meet up. That one's a little off, so I could do a little bit of a trim there. There we go. That looks a little better. Place that on there. And I'm just holding it with my finger underneath there. You can actually take your fingers and try to push that down, but it is these ones are a little bit strong. So I'm just gonna line that up, make sure it's where I want it, and give it a little squish, and turn it over and give it a little squish. So that's a really simple uh, ending to put on a bracelet. Okay, so now we're going to add our closure. So I'm gonna open up a jump ring again. So go on either side, give it a twisting motion. So the best way to get these magnets apart is not to pull on them, but to slide them. So when you slide them, they come out pretty easily. So I'm gonna use this little bit of safety chain. It's about two and a half inches, and this will just help your bracelet um, not pop off if that magnet gets stuck on something. So I'm gonna take my little jump ring and put it through the end of the chain. And then I'm gonna take one end of the magnet and I'm going to pop it on here. And I'm gonna do that up nice and snug. Always make sure your jump rings are done up nice and tight. Now, it can be a little challenging with these magnets because it sort of magnetizes everything, but you just kinda of have to get in there and show it who's boss. Okay, so I'm going to repeat on the other side. I find it easier if I've got it turned over that way. It gives you a little more surface to open up. I go through the end, and I always try to repeat the same sequence, so I'm going to go through my chain first, and then through my clasp, and then I'm going to come in the end of my bracelet and do that up nice and tight. So to make the Layer Me Up bracelet, I'm gonna be using a tray. If you don't have a tray, you can use a lid off a box or if you have a macrame board, um, just get creative and see what you can use, but you do need something to hold your uh, piece down. I'm also gonna be using a little bit of GS Hypo cement at the end. I have a little piece of rat tail here. You can use anything you want. All I do is create a little loop and I'll show you how I uh, use that later. I have a button and I have some, uh, I think this is three millimeter rhinestone chain and I have seven little pieces here. It's all in one, but I have like seven um, crystals in a row there. I have some Chinese knotting cord, and this is about two meters, and this is a small one. This is maybe 0.4 or 0.5. It's not a very um, heavy one. And I also have about 24 inches of 1.5 millimeter leather, and that's about it. So let's get started, and I'll show you how to create this fun bracelet. So the first thing that I wanna do is run my leather through the shank of my button, and I wanna find the center point. So I just match up the ends and bring it down like that. Okay. So now what I want to do is I'm going to create just a little knot on the end just to make it easier to tie this up. So just kind of do that. Okay, now I have my 
center point there. Now I'm going to take this loop that I created. It's not a, it doesn't have to be anything, but all I want to be able to do is just kind of hook it in like that. You could use a bullnose clip on this, but I do find that this is a little bit easier. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is put it on the front like that, and I want to have the button just at the top. And it's going to be kind of hard to see this on camera, so I'm going to just do it off camera and flip this over. Okay, so now I'm going to take one end of my rat tail. I'm just going to move this up so you can see, hopefully. And I just put it through the end there in the loop. This may not look so beautiful on camera, but I'm going to just try to demonstrate how I tighten this up. Okay, so now I just kind of pull that tight and then I'm just going to create a little knot there. So I don't have to have this super tight, but I do want to have my leather quite taut. Okay, so do that. And if you've got somebody to help you, that always helps, but I'm pretty good at tying knots with by myself there. So that's all I'm doing is just creating a little knot there. Turn that back over and this is what I have. So now you can just kind of pull it up. You just want that to be, it's not super taut, but it just has a little bit of tension on it. Okay, so that's the first thing to get started. Okay, so what I've done is taken my two meters of Chinese knotting cord and I have found the midsection. So what I do is I place it behind and then I get my uh, sides all kind of pulled out there. So now I'm going to just be starting with um, macrame. So this is just going to be P's and Q's. The first one's always the hardest for me to show you because I have to hold on to it. So on the right hand side, I'm going to be creating the first loop of my P. And then I'm going to be taking the tail and I want to make sure that I'm on this side of the leather. And I need to get that underneath and up through that loop. So again, the first one's always the hardest because I have to have my hands on there. So I just take that, grab it from underneath and pull it up inside that loop. And now I'm going to tighten that up. And I don't have to have these exactly perfect because I've got lots and lots of Chinese knotting cord. So I want to go about a quarter of an inch away from the shank of the button and make that nice and tight. So now it's going to be a little bit easier to show you how to do this. So now I'm going to create my Q. So it's just like a backwards P around like that. Now I want to make sure that this one is over top of that tail but on this side of the leather. Now I just reach through and grab that and tighten that up. And that's a first um, completed square knot. So you can see I've got like a bump on either side. So now I make my P go over top, pull that through, and I'm making sure that these are nice and tight. And I just tend to do it fairly quickly in my hands. I don't actually make a P. What I do is I kind of pop that over top like that, make sure that's over top of that tail. You always want to make sure it's over top and then I reach through. So I'm kind of, well I don't know, I'm not lazy but I'm just like efficient. I like to get things done. So I don't um, tend to you know line things up perfectly. Um, I do find that this is easier if you tilt your tray towards you. Um, I've had uh, rotator cuff surgery and I have a torn right rotator cuff. So this motion up here is brutal for me. <laughs> so tipping this towards me um, is a lot less painful, but I can't really show you on camera that way. So I'll suffer for this. <laughs> okay, so that's basically all I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to do that for about two and a half inches down the leather. So let me complete that and then I'll come back and show you how to add the rest of this in here. Okay, for the sake of time, I had a second one all made up and this one is in a really pretty sort of silvery gray. I have quite a few different colors available and I'll have those listed in a kit below in the description box. Okay, so I've done about two and a half inches. Let's just measure that. About two and a half inches or so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making one of my square knots. And just before I tighten it up, I'm going to take that first link of the crystal chain and I'm going to pop it underneath the neck of that. So I just kind of lined it up on top here just to kind of balance it and now I'm going to tighten that up. So don't worry if it flops around because it'll tighten up once you do the second side. And sometimes I find it's easier if you open up your leather and pop it in the middle like that. There we go. So we've got our first side done. So now I need to make the other side of my square knot and I'm going to go right up inside that little um, link there. So I'm going to get it started and then I'm going to bring that up inside the same link that I was working on. We just don't want to have that 
There we go, pull that underneath. So now before I tighten that up, I'm gonna have that seated properly and then give that a nice tight pull. Okay, so now I'm gonna create my second one. So we wanna have that in between the second and the third one. So create my square knot. And then I'm going to make the other side. It's a little futzy to get that to stay in there at first, but once you get the first couple, then it gets in there nice and snug. So I can see right here that I didn't pull tight enough on that first one, so I'm gonna go back, just like a shoelace, and kind of tighten that up, pop that in there, and now I'm gonna make it nice and tight. So it's really important that your macrame knots are all nice and snug. And just make sure that this is sit sitting where you want it to. All right, and I'm just gonna carry on. So pop that in between, do my P on one side. Make sure it's nice and snug. And then do my Q in between on the same, gonna go in the same uh, side there, like in between those same ones and make sure that that's nice and snug there. What I like to do is go by the bumps on here. So I'm gonna move this down a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. So when I do this, I did my P, you can see there's a on that side and I'll try to zoom in to make sure that you can see the, um, the bumps. So I've got that bump there, so that tells me I now to need to do my Q on that side. And then I'll show you what happens on this side. So I tighten that up, and now you can see that there's a bump there, so that tells me I have to start on that side. So it's always good to know how to pick up a pattern if you should need to walk away. So I'm just gonna carry on for another two and a half inches and then I'll show you how to finish off this bracelet. Okay, so I've done about two inches of macrame there. And now what I need to do to finish this off is I'm gonna run a little bead of GS Hypo along the top of this um, leather cording for about a half an inch or so. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my knots over top of that. I wanna try to keep it all out of the way so that I don't get glue everywhere. But that just sort of helps this um, stay in there nice and tightly. So what I do is I make my knot and then I pull it up on top of there. And if you do get a little bit of glue on your uh, Chinese knotting cord, you won't really see it because it does dry clear. But I do try to keep it out of the way as much as I can so that it doesn't get glue all over me as I'm trying to create this. But the Chinese knotting cord is great, but it doesn't um, stick super tight like the Irish wax linen that I love to use does. So having this little bit of glue on the end will help with that. You have to work fairly fast because you don't want that glue to dry on you. All right, I'm just gonna take a measurement so we're at two and a half. So now I've got two and a half, two and a half, and just over an inch here. So that's created six and a quarter. And by the time I've ended, this will end up just around a seven inch bracelet. So of course you can adjust accordingly. You might wanna add just a little bit more on either side if you have a larger wrist, or take a little bit off if you have a smaller wrist. So I'm just gonna take this off and then I'm gonna show you how I finish this up. Okay, so I've got that all removed from the board. So now I'm gonna make a little knot in the front of this. We're not gonna to worry too much about how it looks because I am gonna be covering this a bit, but I do wanna keep it, you know, sort of neat. I always try to make things as neat as possible. So I'm just gonna create a little knot at the very end and I wanna pull that really snug. And then I'm gonna flip this over to the back and I'm gonna create a surgeon's knot on that side. So to do that, I'm just gonna wrap it through once and then one more time. And I'll we'll pull that really, really tight on this side. And then I'm going to give it a little trim. So now I do have my thread zapper with me. 
If you don't have one, you can use a lighter to try to sear these ends, or you could do an, an extra uh, surgeon's knot and trim that off. But I do like to sear the ends. So what I'm gonna do is just hold this down until it gets nice and red hot like that. And then I come in and I just kind of melt that down and it will sort of smoke up a little bit, but not to worry. And that just helps it. I just kind of push them together and that helps it from popping out. Now the one thing that will happen when you do use one of these thread zappers is it does make this a little bit hard on the end. So I like to take my pliers and kind of squish that end down just a little bit to sort of soften it up. All right, so now what we're gonna do is create just an overhand knot. Yes, I'm not using a barrel knot. <laughs> just gonna keep it simple on this one. And what I wanna do is create that knot right on top of or at the very end of that little bit that I did there and that will help so that you don't have any of those hardened edges against your skin. Okay so now we've just got our little uh, overhand knot and now I want to take my button and place it in between to sort of give me a measurement and I know that my button needs to accommodate about that size so now I'm going to make another one. So I want to tighten that up, but just before I pull it completely tight, I always like to go in with my button and just pop it in there to make sure that it's the right size. And then I'm going to give that a nice tight pull. And then I'm going to use my cutters and I'm going to trim off the end. And now when you're doing um, up your, your bracelet, you find that this end takes the most punishment. So I do like to take a little bit of GS Hypo and run it into the knot to make sure that it's not going anywhere. And you can even pop a little bit on this side too. So for today, we're going to be using about 20 inches of two millimeter leather. And I will have this in kit form and I'll have a couple different colors for the metal and a few different options for the leather. We also have a beautiful tear cast charm. And I love these ones because they're double sided. And we're going to be using one of their more buttons. And then I have this little, um, I guess it's like a jump ring. It's a decorative jump ring. And one of these collapsible or I guess they're called squishable. I'm really not really too sure what they're called. <laughs> they're like a little ending thing that you put in. We're gonna be using those. And I've got a couple different jump rings, one of our barrel knot tubes, a little uh, four millimeter faceted check glass and a head pin that has a ball on the end. And I'm gonna probably use a little bit of glue. And we're just gonna be using our uh, three basic tools here. So let's get started. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is and I'm, I'm gonna find the center point of my leather and I'm gonna offset it by about two inches. So I'm just gonna pull that off so that I've got a little bit extra here. Now I'm gonna take my little tube that I use for my barrel knots and I'm gonna place it up at the top here. And using this longer piece, which I always keep on top, I find that it's a little bit easier if I do that, I'm gonna make three wraps. So I'm gonna pull this behind and then pull it towards me and go once, twice, three times. And I'm working towards my left hand and I'm gonna grab that end and put it through the back side of the little tube. Don't look at my dirty hands. It's been a busy day in here. <laughs> I'm always doing something. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to just gently tighten that up, not too much. Before I tighten it up, I want to make sure that I can get my button through there. And that goes in there just about perfect. So what I do is I take my thumbnail and I place it right where I want that to go. And now I'm going to pull on this one to tighten that up and you'll see that that just tightens up nicely. And look how pretty that looks. And now I can still get that through really nice. So now I am going to take this and I'm just gonna measure how long I'm gonna cut that at. And now I've, I've got about 20 inches so that because this is gonna be a kit, this will be um, you know good enough for anybody to um, wear. So if, even if you have a large wrist, you'll have plenty here. But I'm gonna cut this at about the six and three quarters or so. Mark, I'm just gonna cut off a little bit here. So now I've got equal ends. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my other parts ready here. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use um, one of my head pins 
and I'm going to place my check glass on there and I'm going to take my chain nose pliers just right on top there and I'm just going to bend away. Now I'm going to use my round nose pliers and come right in and I'm only going to go about a third of the way up. I don't want a super huge loop on this. I'm going to pull up and over and down and I'm going to rotate my pliers and pull that straight to the back. And what I want to make is like a little round loop like that. Now I'm going to come in here right across there and I'm going to wrap that up. So you can wrap it with your fingers if you like but these are quite heavy head pins and uh, they're a little bit hard to do. So just bring that around three times, come in there, trim that off, and I'm just going to tuck in that little burr there. Don't want to have anything sharp poking out. Okay, so now we can assemble this. Okay, so I'm going to take my large jump ring here and I'm going to attach it to my decorative ring here. I need to open that up just a little bit more. And I'm going to close that up. And then I'm going to take one of my small jump rings and attach the rest of this. So I am going to take my, actually I'll take this first, put that in there and that there and then I'm going to pop this on here. Now the reason that I added that extra jump ring is I want to reorient this so that when it's on my wrist that it's going to lay the right way. If I had it the other way around it would be laying the wrong way. So I always try to make sure that everything is kind of going the right way. So now I'm going to place this through there because it's just going to be like a little decorative charm and I just want to make sure that these are all pulled so that's nice and even there. So now I'm going to take this little collapsible end or squishable end, whatever we're going to call it, and I'm just going to place it on making sure that's on there snug and you can actually squish this down which I love. So you don't even have to use the glue to uh, finish the end off here. You just squish. Just make sure you're not squishing up top here. You don't want to damage that at all. I just go back and forth a few times so that's on there nice and snug. Okay so now we're going to put on our button. Now I always like to use a few jump rings. If you just put one on you're going to have a hard time getting that to stay in there nicely. So I'm going to use three. So and I always use the smallest heaviest gauge that I can. And this one, these ones are uh, about four and a half millimeters and 18 gauge. So put one, two, and then my third one. And when you're doing your jump rings up, make sure that you get them done up all the way and that will help keep them nice and secure so that things don't fall apart on you. So I'm now going to put that through the shank of the button. And then when you do it back up, kind of jiggle it back and forth until it just kind of clicks in there. So now when you go to do it up, you've got this lovely decorative feature on the top and then you've got your little charms hanging off the bottom so that you've got a little bit of pretty on the top, on the top of your wrist, and then you've got these lovely little charms on the bottom. So there you So there you go. There's my compilation video. I hope you enjoyed something a little bit different from me. As always, these will all be available in kit form and they'll be linked in the description box below the video. It'll take you directly to my website, which is completely secure. And uh, I have over 8,500 things on my website. So there's lots of good things to look around at. And while you're there, make sure to check out my clearance page. I am clearing out tons of stuff from the store, just doing a bit of editing. You know, I always like to keep things fresh. So there are some deals to be had on my clearance page. So you'll find that on the front page of my website. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I love to hear from everybody. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure that you do so. I want to thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.